Berlin is my all-time favorite place. It's a perfect mix of Germany and South Africa to me. It's essentially German Cape Town. This trip was a gift from T. I went with Rach. We bound journals in advance and we knew that our main purpose for the trip was breakfast, coffee and journaling. Listen, we live in a small town again. Our ambitions are low. That's my first tip for journeying while on a trip. Plan your trip around the journeying. <laughs> okay, if, if that's not possible and you'd still like to journal while traveling, you can still do that. I've journaled on trips where uh, we went to get my son's passport when he was a year old. And on that trip, I just journaled during nap time on the hotel bed. But this trip, this trip to Berlin, oh, this trip. This trip had 24 hours of journal opportunities. Journal opportunities, journal opportunity. I had lots of, I had lots of time to journal. Before we get to the rest of the tips, I made a video to take you along with me. The panini has been rough, maybe you'd like to visit Berlin virtually with me. The video has a lot of trains, but the, but the underground trains are one of my favorite things about Berlin, really, really. I even love the smell of the underground, which is such a weird thing to say, and don't judge me. But it's been a long time since I've traveled too. I used to do quite a lot, which I think is inevitable if you live in Europe and especially if you're an immigrant. I'm both. And of all the trips that I have done, I've become very good at traveling and making art. Every time I've shared one of the journals that I've made while on my trips, I'm always asked how I find the time. My secret <laughs> to finding the time is that I, I don't do touristy things. I'm not interested in seeing the Berlin Wall. I won't go to Buckingham Palace. The Eiffel Tower really is the only touristy thing that I will consistently come back to. One of our best friends is, unfortunately, <laughs> that kind of tourist. The touristy tourist can't. I love her. And, and they exist, and you might be one of those people, but I am not.
my goal with any kind of travel is to chill the hell out and eat eggs for breakfast. I realize if you're traveling far, if you're coming further than I am when I'm traveling in Europe, you might not want to do the same things as home. I mean, I don't want to do the same things as I do at home when I'm traveling, um, but they don't, they don't have eggs that are not boiled where I live. You know, poached eggs that have the whites all cooked and the yolks still a little bit raw on the edges and, you know, hello, basically not watery poached eggs. Those are my greatest pleasure in life. If I'm going to distill it down for you, my pleasure in life is just avoiding boiled eggs. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man, I remember being so naive. When life was good, weather and palm trees Back in the day, you were everything I need But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams Oh yeah, you played me like a fool When you made me believe that the line between love Wasn't thick enough to read Oh yeah, you see we in despair Crime everywhere You're selling false hope Cause you just don't care Nah, uh, you just don't care Nah, 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 you just don't, just don't care Uh, you just don't Still selling false hope Cause you just don't care House, house if we talk into a uniform, who the real? You know we in the deep south, so let's keep it real. This is what they used to mob, let's drag and kill. I never made the party cause I felt the paper bag. Just gotta get this money cause you know I never had it. I'm feeling like my dude, the way I carry my baggage. Another way to find the time is to keep a limited amount of supplies. For this trip, I took a lot. For me, for me. I usually work with less. Having their supplies limits your decision making. It makes you work quicker, faster, um, and you're not spending all your time wondering what supplies you should use. My recommendations for a travel kit is washi tape, pencil, pen, and glue. That's it. Those are the essentials. I need a ruler for drawing because my father has architecture in his veins, and I like being precise, though I am apparently also like being inaccurate. Uh, and that's because as much as I've tried, osmosis does not allow for me to gain architecture knowledge from my architecture friends. But you can add to your art journal travel kit if you take small scissors, an eraser and watercolors with a water brush. You might want to pack in pens at different thicknesses or a color pencil for pops of color. And there's super bonus points for a pencil case that fits the journal. That's my, that, those are my dream travel kits on different levels. <laughs> a corollary to that is to use found art. That's my all time favorite thing to use in journaling. And I think it's because of the meaning in it. You can use flyers and pamphlets, free maps, papers that have fallen on the floor and papers that are falling off a pole. I will always ask for a business card. If the menu is paper, then I'm taking it with me. Besides this collected ephemera, take photos of things that you want to remember. Now you get the pretty ones, the ones that look great, but the ones that you, don't, that you want to remember don't have to be pretty. And you can delete those photos once you've transferred them to your journal. These types of photos that I'm talking about are the name of the menu item you ordered, especially if it's in another language. Oh my word, do you know how many times I've written down French breakfast and it makes me feel fancy AF. Instead of taking out your journal, writing it down, taking all the time to do that and the effort, which means you probably won't do it, 
just snap a quick photo of the weird street name, the name of the cafe, the name of the metro station. These are all foreign and, and new and wonderful just because of the weird names. Take a screenshot of the area on Google Maps. Photograph brick patterns on a building, textures, details. Essentially, in order to travel like an artist, you have to travel like an artist. You're probably already seeing the world as an artist. You know, there's a, there's a way of seeing the world where you are drawing even when you're not drawing. If you know what I'm talking about, then you know. Otherwise, start drawing and you'll know. But transfer that skill of seeing the world like an artist to your traveling. And also, big point, stop traveling like a tourist. Tourist goes to the main spots. An artist, on the other hand, sees the spots on the way to the hidden nooks of a city. A tourist uses a cab, an artist walks, duh. An artist gets as much as possible in the day. Works through a checklist. An artist is still allowed to plan, <laughs> especially if you top A artists like me, but that also know that two amazing breakfast places across the road from each other mean that it's subsequent double breakfast day and maybe lunch plans can be cancelled or moved changed <laughs> an artist judges by the details they look up down and up close an artist allows himself to feel a place an artist doesn't visit an art gallery just because they're an artist. And an artist knows that every town has its own color palette. And these color palettes are personal to you. For me personally, Geneva's turquoise. Hard turquoise. My best friend lives there and she's also becoming turquoise to me because of Geneva being turquoise. London is royal blue. Paris is light pink. And Berlin, it's yellow. Although it's changing over time.
you're unable to travel, you can still travel like an artist in your own neighborhood. Now, I know that that sounds kooky, <laughs> a little bit crunchy, but you can. In fact, it's kind of like traveling, but with gratitude. So back in 2013, the third Get Museum ever, uh, Sabina Farm Moments to Live For, she used to share photo walks on her blog. I immediately took to them. I knew I needed them and I started doing them too. And all you need to do is go for a walk around the block. Take your camera with you or your phone, because phone cameras are great. Um, and if you can't do the block, just do your house really. You can do this around your house too. If you want to do more than a block, you can do your village or your city or your closest city. So I absolutely hate the city that my studio is in, which means that I do it a lot. I actively travel around this city like an artist. I'm cultivating gratitude for the second ugliest city in Germany. I'm currently reading these words that I typed this morning at a coffee shop in that city. It's a really nice cafe and has omelets, not poached eggs, but not boiled eggs. So like almost, almost. Anyway. So you can either just explore or you can explore with a the theme. Constraints are good here. Search for numbers or circles or a color or a pattern. And what you do is you just take photos of things that pop up in that theme. If you want to take it to the next level and make a zine out of them, you can. Or you can just simply allow them to be a moment of your time. And I promise you that these photo walks will help cultivate gratitude and help practice that artist eye. Artist dates where you explore your neighborhood with a journal, they achieve the same thing. All good. So all of these things apply whether you are in a new place or a current place, an old place with new eyes. Here are other ways to maximize the amount of art on your trip. Okay, one, use pencil to write what you did that day. 
You can do this to sign pages. And even if you bind your own journal, you'll probably never have enough pages. So you just got to work in it anyway. Know that you can add more pages with washi tape and you can tear some out. And here's a trigger warning. But you can also just leave the rest of your journal page just blank. Yeah, yeah, I know. Another trigger warning. I do this a lot. When I went to America for three weeks in 2018, I completed five journals. Okay, well, uh, 4.5. And I finished the half filled one over a few months when I was back home. Another time I went to London for a week and I took a 192 page journal and I finished that baby in its entirety except for 20 pages. And then, <laughs> and then I didn't touch it again. But it's still a finished journal. If you have unfinished pages that you want to fill up, you can use them to write your favorite things from the trip. Ask any co-travelers to do the same. Also, if you want, you can totally just write one quote from the trip over one page. You can stick a map over two pages and add nothing else. You do you, boo. Another way to maximize the amount of art on trip is to journal at cafes and restaurants. Okay, if you've got kids and they're with you, you'll probably not be able to do this, I know. But if someone who's not a child is on a trip with you, then they probably like you enough to allow you to journal during lunch. So I have a habit, maybe a developed one, <laughs> where I need to be doodling something on paper in order to be able to properly pay attention to a conversation. That's why when I do podcast interviews, I'm perpetually writing. Perpetually. But <laughs> my husband jumps at the opportunity to read during lunch when we're on a trip. When we were at a villa in the Austrian Alps with my parents, I journaled on the balcony of their house while they played games with my son. There are lots of opportunities. Some of them are small, but lots of little bits get to a journal. <laughs> and another big tip for this is to try and get as much done as possible without ignoring your own needs. If you are tired of journaling, don't keep doing it. If I'm drawing, I get nauseous if it's been longer than an hour. Not like nauseous. It may sound like mine. It may sound like that. But I swear it happens. Those details drive me dizzy. And I like details. But I like them slightly less than I hate nausea. And so, guess what? I just stop. I stop. I take a walk. And I might come back to a few hours, days, whatever later. But I don't go against what I'm feeling. Like, I'm not going to force myself to journal. What the heck? Like, no.
process for my travel journaling now. And it might take time for you to realize what works best for you. And it's going to change over the different seasons of your life. But this is my process. This is how I do it. I add the ephemera and paper to pages without gluing them down. I group like ephemera with like, and usually I can collate my experiences into groups. Going through the videos from the trips, there are very definite boundaries for me. Like I can see the groups very clearly. I know what they were. Like I might not know when they're happening. It's not like day one, this area, day, you know, like it's not like that. It's just experiences that group themselves together somehow in my mind but these ephemera like the ephemera groups together in my head before it ever goes onto the page and color schemes be damned it will figure itself out if an experience or memory that I want to remember doesn't have ephemera then I'll just write it down I don't write down everything definitely not not everything is important that is the entire point of this um but I usually write it down with bullet points in pencil on a page. And I find that assigning pages to these groupings, that works well for me. If I find a postcard or business card or flyer that works particularly well on both sides, and I realize that my journal's going to finish before I do, I'll keep it. I'll keep the postcard as possible while she taped extra page. I'm not going to put it in. And then when I have time or energy or lust, I can't remember if that's an Afrikaans or German word, but it's, it's not an English word, but it means something. Lust is like, I think it's, I think it might be both. doesn't matter. Okay. But it, it means something close to keenness. So like when I have that like keenness inside of me, which does not like, that's not a good word. That's why I use the word lust. Lust, ah, <laughs> it's lust, I think, in German and lust in Afrikaans, doesn't matter. But when I have that feeling, then I will journal. I'm not going to journal if I don't feel like it. And I will only journal what I feel like. If I feel like drawing or lettering or arranging the paper on the page and gluing down. So, so to summarize, my art journaling while traveling process is basically layers. The entire journal is one layer, just like one canvas is one layer. All of the memories count as the base or the roots or maybe you want, whatever word you want to use. Can you tell that words are not my strong suit or choosing singular words at least. Then the paper is the next layer and then there's the illustrations on the writing. So I don't ever finish a page in its entirety before moving on to the next. It's all fluid and in motion. And I'm in motion. I work the same way when I do journals in the day. Um, it, it, I love that process. I love the process of seeing a journal as a whole and, and working with a journal as if it's one canvas rather than, uh, you know, like 96 pages of canvas, you know? But my journals are not always finished by the time I get home. Usually they are about 80% done. I've never, if, if there's any time where I've done a journal and I only got 20%, like when I went to Florence, for example, I, I mean, I had about 30% of a journal done. Like not good, not, not good. I won't finish it when I get home. I'll just throw it away. I'm done with it. So 80% done and Sometimes I feel like working on them more and sometimes I'm done. When I'm on the trip working on my journal, then I see it as processing. And if I'm working on it after the trip, it's more reflective. Working on it afterwards, I use my pencil marks and my photos, especially those ones that have been taken to remember rather than to capture beauty. And I use those to guide me and to finish off the 
travel experience and to finish documenting all of that. I encourage you to figure it out for yourself. This is travel, travel journaling and even traveling around the neighborhood and journaling is such a gift. It helps gratitude. It gives you warm fuzzies when you remember it again. And it's just a nice thing to do with your hands. <laughs>